Today we'll be proving that this language, ETM, which is the set of all Turing machines with empty language, is undecidable. If you happen to know what Rice's theorem is, you don't have to watch this video, but today we're going to prove that this is undecidable. And how we're going to do it is we're going to suppose ETM were decidable. And the way I'm going to write that is decided uh, by some machine E. So I'm going to call the machine E that supposedly decides ETM. And we're going to show that this machine cannot possibly exist. It's a lot easier than the proof that we did for ATM. But we're going to use the fact that ATM is undecidable to help us prove that this machine cannot possibly exist. And how we're going to do that is we're going to use this machine E to decide quote unquote ATM. But we know that ATM cannot possibly be decided because we proved that it, no decider exists. So we got to use this machine E in some kind of way in order to help us prove that ETM is undecidable. So remember that if we are to decide ATM, we need to be able to answer the question machine and input W and answer whether or not that machine accepts W. Okay, so we're going to try to decide ATM right here. And remember that the ATM, any machine for ATM must take those two inputs where M is a machine. So where M is a Turing machine and W is some stringless, some, say some string and sigma star. Then what we can do is, well, we could feed this machine M into E. We could do that because E takes any Turing machine, figures out whether its, its language is empty, supposedly. But I claim that that's an, that doesn't help us very much because we're trying to answer the question of whether M accepts W specifically. But if we find out that M's language is empty, well, that, that immediately tells us it's not, it uh, doesn't accept W. It doesn't accept anything. But if we figure out that M's language is not empty, that doesn't answer whether or not it accepts W specifically. If it's not empty, it accepts some string, but I don't know which ones necessarily, because E, its job is to figure out whether it's empty or not. It doesn't tell us what strings are accepted necessarily. So we need to be able to make a different machine that has empty language exactly when M accepts W. So we're going to, as the first step, and this is common to do, we're going to construct a Turing machine M prime, and its job is to, on whatever input it gets, is going to uh, embed the instructions of this machine in somewhere so that this guy's language is empty exactly when M accepts W, or the exact opposite, it, it depends. But here we're going to have it correspond. So on input, w, uh, on input X, it's just some arbitrary input. It could be equal to W or not. So uh, there are a bazillion ways of doing this. This is not the one way of doing it, but the, one, the way we're gonna do it is if this x string that this m prime new machine gets is not w then we reject outright just if it's not w throw it away and if it is uh equal to w we're going to oops we're going to run the original machine m upstairs on w the original well, since x is equal to w, it's the same string. It doesn't actually matter. In fact, you, there are many ways you could have done this. Um, uh, except if m accepts. So what I really should say here is that uh, we're going to accept x. So this m prime thing is going to accept as input exactly when m accepts w. Okay, so what we can figure out here is, well, what is the language of M prime? Well, it's gonna reject every single string except W possibly. So the language of M prime is gonna be equal to the empty set or just W. 
And the criterion for when it's empty is if M does not accept W. Okay, so yeah, so we're actually going to do the opposite condition here, but that's okay. Uh, it's going to be empty if M does not accept W. And it's going to be something that's not empty otherwise. Okay, so... It, the, again, you could have done this either way. You could have had it be just a single string if M does not accept W and empty otherwise. But there, are, again, there are many ways of doing this. So what are we going to do here is, well, the difference of whether, um, whether the language of this machine is empty or not is whether M accepts W. So the answer is in some sense tied to the fact of whether this thing is empty and we have a supposedly a way of figuring out whether it is empty so here we're going to run that supposed decider e for the emptiness problem on this new machine that we just made m prime so well, since this is a decider, it must accept or reject. So if E accepts, then that says that M prime has empty language by definition. And if it has empty language by construction, that means that the original machine M did not accept the original input W. So if we're trying to solve the ATM problem, this is a reject situation. So here we need to reject. And if E rejects, we need to accept. And the reasoning is very similar. If E says, no, your language is not empty, that means that we're in this second situation right here, which means that the only way we could have gotten to this accept line right here is if uh, M did accept W which is the problem we're trying to solve. And so we need to say accept down here. And so this tells us that because all of this runs in a finite amount of time, this first step is just making the machine, it's not running it. And since all of this runs in a finite amount of time, by assumption, we're assuming E runs in a finite amount of time, therefore that tells us that ATM is decidable if ETM is. But ATM is not decidable, so there's no way that ETM can be. So what we can conclude from this is since ATM is undecidable, we can conclude that ETM is undecidable. Oops, got to fix that C. All right, so uh, put comments down below about this proof or the fact of whether ETM is undecidable. Question uh, for you to figure out, is ETM recognizable? So clearly at least either ETM or ETM complement is not recognizable because if they were both recognizable, this thing would be decidable because we proved that. But uh, is it the case that both of ETM and its complement are undecidable or, uh, sorry, not recognizable or, or is one of them uh, recognizable? I want you to figure it out and put it, in, it into the comments down below. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.